Good afternoon. My name is Scott Rudd, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com, and welcome to today's recap and look ahead. 观众朋友们，大家好，欢迎收看今天的《狙击美股》，我是主持人张叔，在纽约向您问好。周一，美股收高，标准普尔五百指数是创下了二零一六年的最高位。在上周五，市场是发布了一份低于预期的就业报告，而这份报告呢，无疑是改变了当前市场对于包括六月份是否会加息以及美国经济状况的一些担忧。在今天的数字当中，我们看到美联储最新的指标是显示，美国的就业市场状况正在以七年以来最快的速度在恶化，因为这份美联储。的指标显示，就业市场的状况是为负的四点八，而此前的一个预期是负的零点八，而这也是第五个月就业市场的状况。美联储的这个指标是连续第五个月是低于了零的位置，因此这无疑是给大家带来了更多担心。但另外一方面，我们看到美联储的官员今天出来讲话是有一系列鸽派的言论，其中包括了美联储主席耶伦，他认为市场不应该对其中的一份就业报告过。过度的解读，他对于当前美国就业的状况依然是。比较有信心的。另外一方面，我们看到圣路易斯的联储行长也表示，七月份的加息依然有可能。好的，更多的消息，让我们来看一下今天交易员的独家分析。Hi Scott, your stocks traded higher today with energy leading the advances as oil price rose, and also the Jen Yellen just gave a very positive comments on the U.S. economy. But last Friday we got a weaker than expected job data, but I, it surprised for me that how the market absorbed this job data. So, how do you think about the overall market right now? Well, I think it was a, a, a surprise to everyone, mm -hmm. right? The, everyone in, in, on the street was looking for 150, 160, 170. Nobody thought less than 50. Yeah. So, who knew how the market would react? Mm -hmm. But that's the beauty of technical analysis. You don't have to know how the market's going to react. You have levels, and then you judge it thereafter. Because I was super bullish Thursday, going into Friday, thinking we we're ready to break out and go. And then when I saw the Friday number, I'm like, oh my goodness. You know, maybe you know we're, we're gonna we're gonna correct a bit here and, and have a horrible day. And then lo and behold, you look at the chart, uh, nothing really happened. We actually wound up holding this upper range. I drew this upper range when we were together on Thursday and said you can't get too bearish if we hold above 2,090, and that's what we held. And then today we came above it. So technically, the market's been acting really well since the double bottom. You know, first time into resistance, kind of failed, pulled back, held the 200-day, came up. Above the eight-day moving average, so at this point, I think as long as we stay above 2,090, traders are going to try and be long. And at some point, it feels like in the next, you know, few sessions or weeks, we're going to be testing the all-time highs from two years ago, which is closer to 2,132. And also, oil closed 2.2 percent higher today, and uh, that's the main driver of the market today. But at the same time, we see the gold perform very well. As so, how do you think about these two commodities? Well, you know, rotation, rotation, mm -hmm. rotation, rotation. That's what's been going on. And this morning I talked about how many times are we going to kiss $50 in oil yeah. until finally we break above it and go to 54. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's the case, you know what? Start looking for some uh, possibilities or opportunities in the XLE and the OAH. And look at the XLE today. XLE had a really nice move. Okay, we've talked about this technically so many times. Well, here's your closer look. This is from the lower level move, right? This was your first move, came up to the highs, pulled back, held this trend line and now just broke above this little pivot so right now this is saying that the xle might be uh, actual tailwind through the highs of the year versus a headwind like it was for the much of the past two years look at the size of the move in the oahs wow that's a huge move to take back the 200 day so that's showing you that some money went here you know considering look how battered and bruised this thing's been since uh two years ago so now it's just starting to wake up from this lower level and one more thing the ags look at moo no one talks about the soft ags anymore. Well, the soft ags just broke above a key resistance. Now, if we could hold above it, there's some room there. So we're starting to see a broad-based rally happen with good rotation, so you have to follow the money. Well, on the other side, there was some noise about the market, especially the U.S. economy condition. And uh, that definitely, you know, bring the jewel off the table. And uh, people are wondering if we have a chance to raise the rate on July. But I think the overall, the expectation of this rate hike definitely will impact on the bank sector. So how do you think about this sector? Well, on Friday, the banks were hit the hardest. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, they came off lows and had a little bit of follow through today. So they didn't break them. They're still in the game. I think the banks are kind of thinking July. 
I think June is way too quick. But if all of a sudden the S&P, which I'm sorry, the Fed does watch the S&P. If the, if the S&P is at 2150 in July, chances are they're going to raise it a quarter. Okay, and that means mostly everything will be higher, and then they'll cool it off. If all of a sudden tomorrow we go down and we go back into this range below 2100, chances are maybe not till December. The Fed does watch the market. And like the banks, like you just said, you look at JP Morgan, for instance. JP Morgan, you know, did have a sell off, okay, which um, hit a, an intraday low on Friday, held the 21 day, and came right back to resistance. So now I would say erase this line. Okay, let's do that for you. Erase this. And now if you broaden out the range, as long as JP Morgan stays above Friday's low right here of 63.55, you can't get too bearish on the banks. And a little inside action might actually lead to a little bit more upside. So the banks have taken Friday and today in stride. Okay, that's all for today's show. Yes, and each day we'll just kind of keep trying to follow the money. Because if you follow the money, tactically that's how you create cash flow and alpha in your portfolio. 好的，感谢您的收看，我们明天再见。